So this is proof by induction. It's not in our book, but I have a worksheet for it. We're gonna start off by talking about the domino effect. So our first step on the domino effects is that the first domino must fall. Our second step is that if any other domino falls in the lineup, well then, basically, if the kth domino falls, well then, what happens next is the next domino will fall, and so on and so on. So that would be for the k plus 1 domino that will fall. If any other domino in the lineup falls, i.e., if the kth domino falls, then the next domino will fall, which would be the k plus 1 domino, and so on and so on. So our first step is to check our base, that make sure our base is true. So our base could be the first value, the first number, which could be zero or one, or it could be some other number. The second step is we assume that the statement is true for the kth number. Basically, that's your if. Your if is always your assumption. And our step three is you prove, you're proving your then statement, so we need to prove true for your k plus one value. And in order to prove that, you do need to use your if, your assumption from step two. Once you've proved it's true for k plus one, then we use our therefore symbol, and we say that's true for all numbers. Therefore, you've proved it's true for all numbers. Let's do an example. Okay, so the problem is a summation that we learned in Calculus 1, that the summation of k from k equals 1 to n, so that would mean 1 plus 2 plus, you're summing all the ones from 1 to n, that it's equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So we want to prove that this is true by induction. So our first step, or step 1, is our base. Let's write that. And our base is our first one, k equals 1. So we can use summation notation or not. So we're showing it's true for n equals 1. So instead of an n at the top, we put 1, n equals 1, of k. And we want to know if that's equal to, instead of n, we're using n equals 1. So it's 1, and then 1 plus 1 over 2. So let's work out both sides. On the left, k equals 1. And we, we've come to the top number, so we're done. On the right, we get 1. So therefore, it's true for our base. So we've done our base. I know this seems like a silly step, but we're going to assume it's true for n equals k. So it's the same statement, except it's a k instead of an n. So 1 plus 2. Again, that changes to k. Again, I know this is what we're um, trying to prove, but we're assuming it's true for the kth one. That's like the one that needs to fall in order for our next one and all the others to be true. So we want to prove true for n equals k plus 1. So let's write that out. We want to prove 1 plus 2 plus, plus k is our previous one, but we want to prove for one more term. The next term is k plus 1. You can see we're just adding 1 to the previous one. And we're taking our n here and replacing it with k plus 1. Again, instead of n times n plus 1 over 2, it's k plus 1 over k plus 1 plus 1. Now, just like your trig identities, I like to prove the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. And somewhere in the middle, we'll use this fact, okay? So we have to basically, 
work on one side and transform it to the other to show that they are equal. So I'm going to start with the left hand side. And that, what we're going to do next is I'm going to take this, see how that's the left side of my assumption? So I'm going to replace it with this. So let's do that. So that gets replaced with k times k plus 1 over 2. And this is already there. So as you can see, these are equal from the assumption. And that's still there. So what we need to do next is just add these two, common denominator. We'll distribute, just times. And as you can see here, these are equal when you add the ones. And that is exactly the same as what we got. So we've just proved the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Left-hand side, right-hand side. We proved with algebra that it's true. And using the assumption, of course, right here. Therefore, don't forget your last step. Therefore, it's true for all numbers. QED. It has been shown in Latin. Let's do another one. So we're going to prove true for n equals 2. n equals 1 doesn't make sense because there would only be one of them in the order. There would be nothing to change the order of. So you do need to check and you need to write this step. And yes, that's true. We actually proved that was true in the last video. So I'm going to check mark it. I am going to start again with the left side. And this first step doesn't look like much, but it is a step. So what I've done is I've taken these and I grouped them. I put them in parentheses. And by putting them in parentheses, I'm telling us so let's first multiply the first two and then the third and so on until we get to the kth one so that this becomes one matrix. Now that we see that that's one matrix, well then we can apply the inverse rule when there's only two. So this would become in reverse because we know it's true for two. Well, now we get to apply our given, our assumption, our number two. This is this. So we replace it. And it looks like this is my right-hand side. So I've proved my left-hand side is equal to my right-hand side. Therefore, true for all. N, and we've proved at QED. That's it. Have a good day.